today we have this function longest substring and the goal is to take a string and to find the longest substring of completely unique characters so basically we have some examples here an empty string there are no unique characters so we should just return zero that's the length of unique characters zero a b b um, the greatest length is two and it's right oops it's right here with this um, a and b there we go a b um, this one has eight so if we count we have a b c d e f g and then a we have a uh, non-unique character so we have one two three four five six seven seven there and then if we look here we have another unique subset until we get to this second x, or this uh, second x here so we have b c d so one two three four five six seven eight so that's the longest one is that middle section there you can tell like this is actually pretty difficult to do as a human and, and kind of a great case for a computer to come in and and solve this for you so these are our test cases uh, we're looking for the longest unique substring and it has to be in linear time so no nested for loops we need something else and if you've seen some of my earlier videos, you know that there are some approaches that we can take to avoid the nested for loops. And in this particular video, we're gonna use something called the sliding window pattern, but we're gonna use it in conjunction with something that's kind of like a frequency counter pattern and something else that's uh, pretty much based on a multiple pointer pattern. In other words, we're gonna implement the sliding window pattern using multiple pointers. And now if that was just like a bunch of jumbled words to you, don't worry because we're going to go over all of that in depth and uh, you'll pick up some useful uh, tricks probably to solve other problems as well. So if you haven't seen those three videos, those are useful to watch because they introduce each of these concepts independently. Um, multiple pointers, sliding window, and... Um, and frequency counter pattern, which is kind of what we're going to use here. But really, we're just going to create a map to access cer certain values in, in constant time. Um, won't be frequency per se, but it'll be very similar. So a lot of words, 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 words. Now let's get to some of this code. We have our function, longest substring. It takes a string, as we said. And we want to return the longest. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to return the longest substring it starts at zero and now we have two pointers this is part of that multiple pointer pattern that we're going to use to create our sliding window we don't need to use these we could use a for loop and some additional variable so this p1 first pointer could be like the i in the for loop just keeps moving forward and then we could just create a second one but i think this makes it clearer and easier to demonstrate so we have two pointers um, which we're going to use to keep track of where we're at in our array. And then we have a map or just, you know, an object called uh, character indices. And so we're going to push some data to this. We're going to push a character in our string to this map so that we can check immediately in constant time if we've already seen it before. And specifically, if we have seen it, we're going to check for which index it's at so that we don't have to work backwards and, and do some additional counting. We can do one loop over the uh, string and have an answer of what the longest unique substring is. That's really important. So we're going to use a while loop since we're using those two pointers. We could have used a for loop, like I said, and just removed one of these pointers, but I think this uh, is kind of a nice pattern for, um, for kind of understanding what we're trying to do. So let's just pull up a string so that we have some reference point so let's take this string this will be probably the best example because um, we're going to have to iterate over it a little bit so i'll just pull that up and just put some space in between these characters so it's a little clear um, 
So let's just kind of space these out. There we go. And now we have our pointers, and we already know where they're at. So P1 is at the uh, zeroth index, and P2 is also at the zeroth index. And we know that our longest variable, oops, is equal to zero, and our char indices, um, we'll do a little comment here to make this, because that's gonna grow. But right now it has nothing in it, it's just an empty object. And this is kind of a nice way to visualize this. So now we're just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna put some space here so they can highlight it. We're gonna say, well, P2 is less than string length. Well, that's the string length. P2 is definitely less than it, has got a lot more room to go. So we're gonna go into our while loop and we're gonna say, let the current character in this string, let it equal uh, the P2 index. So our current character right now um, would be string, which is this at the P2 index, which is A. Oops. And then we're gonna say, okay, well, if, let's look at our map. If that uh, char indices for that current character, if it has a number value, then run some additional logic. But it doesn't, we check it and it's empty. So we're gonna leave this for now. And we're gonna go to this else statement. And we're gonna say, okay, since that doesn't exist in our map, since A isn't in our map, um, add it. So char indices at current character, which is A, um, add the index of P2. So in other words, add this zero index right here. So, okay, we can do that. We add it to our map. And then we get out of this if block and we're just gonna do something we do on every iteration of this loop, which is increment P2. So we move up to one, and then we want to determine the length of the current substring and update max if applicable. So we don't necessarily have to do this here. Uh, we could do it in one of these if blocks, but it's just a lot cleaner if we do it here because then we don't have to handle the case if we make it to the end and need to do it. So there's just kind of a clean way to do it. Um, a, you know, not as efficient as it could be, but it's more readable and probably more important in this case because this is just a constant time anything. We're just going to compare um, our current longest value, which is zero. Remember up here, our longest string value, it's zero. And then we're going to compare the difference of P2 and P1. And so P2 and P1, that is one minus zero, so that's one. So one is the biggest, and so we're going to update our longest variable. So longest up here now becomes one because we have a unique string um, here of, or sorry, here of one. So inclusive of A, exclusive of P2. Um, so, okay, now we're gonna go back to the beginning of our loop. So P2, still less than string length, new character we have is B. All right, it's not in our map, so we're just gonna add it. Oops, we're gonna add it, and at the new index, the new P2 index of one, um, we're gonna increment our P2. We're gonna compare, you know, two minus zero. Two is the new longest string, so we're gonna update that. Say okay, now it's two, and do the same thing. Have the length, move forward, Oh, we have D and we have it at index, oops, two. And then we're gonna move our T2 forward. We're gonna update our longest variable. Um, we're gonna do the same thing. We just add it to uh, that index. We update our P2 and we update our longest. Um, same thing, keep going basically until we get to A because Right now, these are all unique characters. So, update that, and we update our unique count, and let's just do a sanity check real quick. Let's say, make sure that this is right. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven minus zero should actually be seven, so I think I, I skipped something there. 
but uh, that's okay. Well, actually, we it would have been six when we last updated it, so it'd be six minus zero. So I did skip one, but that's six, and so that's that's okay. Um, but now we're at a. So now come down here, and our current character is at a because our p two is at this uh, seven index. And so now we ask this question again: If type of character index uh, the current character, which is a, so if this, it's, if it's a number, if this value is a number, which it is, it's zero, which by the way is why we use this type of check, because if we were just to use a truthiness check and say char indices at current char, zero is falsy, but in this case it, it's true for us. We want, we want to know if that's a number. Um, and specifically we ask if this is greater than or equal to P1. Now that will become more clear why we do that in, in a little bit, but basically we just want to make sure that this is still within our quote unquote window. So our window, when we talked about the sliding window pattern, is this. It's everything up to the P2 index. So P1 all the way up to the P2 index. So that's why we check, because if A were here, then we wouldn't want to count zero because it's outside of our index. But since we haven't moved our P1 yet, we're still inside of our index or inside of our sliding window. So we pass this check. So now we need to, I have jump here, P1, to the location of the duplicate character so that it becomes on the edge, so to speak, of the window. So we're going to take our P1 and we're going to look at, okay, well, where is this index? Now, it could have been in some other place. It just happens to be at zero. Um, so we're just going to take zero plus one. But, you know, if it were here, we could jump as far as we needed to. So it is jumping. It's not just incrementing, which is why we want, is the whole reason we save these indices is so that we can jump forward without having to start another loop or anything like that to iterate p1. So we move up to you know 0 plus 1 and then we uh, reassign this index because um, this is outside of our window now. So remember this is our window, this is our unique substring and a0 is no longer relevant. So we need to update that to where our new a value is which is there. So that's our new a value, and we want to include that in our window. That's how we avoid you know, looping over it again. So we're just going to update to that P2 index, which is, I think, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, but I count from 1, so yes, that's 7. That was confusing. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so update that to 7. And now you can see okay, well, why we might want this check where we say if the index is greater than P1, because if we had, say, we had like two things there and we had a jump, we had, we had a jump P1 up to this value, well, now those would still be in the map and we don't want to have to delete them out of the map because then we'd have to iterate over everything between, you know, A and, and D where we quote unquote would have jumped to. So that's why we have this check. Um, we might have an example of that in the string. I think we will actually. So that'll become, again, clear in a little bit. So now we do what we do every time, which is increment P2, and then compare our longest. And remember, it's P2 minus P1. And so we had 7, it was at 8, and now it's uh, at B. So that should be, uh, that should be um, 7, I think. Yeah. 1. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, but really, it's eight because I started at one. So we have eight minus one, seven. Yes. So longest seven. All right. Um, now we loop again. So we have our new P2 value. We still have space. We're going to ask okay, does X exist in that map? Nope, it doesn't. So x isn't in the map, so we're going to add it here at the current index, which I'm pretty sure we said was 8. And at any rate, it's the one that comes after this one, so yeah, it's 8. 
And then we update our max. It's bigger now. It's one bigger. Um, now we do it again. We increment P2. And then we, you know, increment P2, and then we update our longest. And then we do this check again. And now we see, okay, X does exist. X is does have a number value to it in our character map, and it is greater than the P1 index, which is you know way back here. Um, you know, eight is greater than one. And so we need to jump P1, and this time we're we're actually going to jump. Um, so we're going to look at the character index, current character, which is x, uh, plus 1. So x is at 8, so let's jump to 8, which was here, our first x. And then we're going to add 1 because we want to um, include this in our window. And we want to um, allow that to, you know, Exit, exit the window on the on the left side, so to speak. And so now we need to reassign our P2, um, or well, reassign this x value to this x value, since that's the one that's in our window now. So that one is at nine. So we'll put that there, and then we're going to increment our P2, and we are going to. Um, update the longest which is now it's like 10 minus 9 1 so we're not going to update anything we have a very short string now a string of 1 just this x value and then so we're gonna you know loop again all right we're almost there you can see how it's gonna end so p2 is on the last one so it's still less than the length of the overall string um, we're going to check if z is in there it's not so we're gonna add it um, the final index and then we're going to increment our p2. Now we go over the edge of the array, um, or the edge of the string, rather. Um, our longest, we're not going to update it because we only have two unique characters, x and z. It's not longer than our longest value of 8. Um, we're going to hit up here, and we're going to say p2 is no longer less than the string length. It's exactly equal to string length. And so we're just going to return longest, which we have talked about, is 8, which is what we'd expect based on this test right here. So that was kind of a lot, but, uh, you know, when you, when you need to move from quadratic to linear time, sometimes it is a lot, a lot of work. But anyway, I think it, it makes a lot more sense once you kind of grasp the overall pattern which is uh, that we're using this concept of sliding window so that we can only iterate through, we only have to iterate through the string one time. We're going to cache the indices, map to these characters, um, and then we're just going to, you know, compare this length and increment our pointers forward on each, each step. So any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, hit me up in the comments. And if you were confused on any of this, there's also, remember, three other videos that talk about each of these patterns separately, this sort of using a map pattern to be able to access things in constant time. There's a talk about that. There's a talk about using multiple pointers. And then there's also a talk specifically about using this sliding window pattern. All right, I, I guess I mentioned all right there. That was me running the tests. They all passed, we're all good. Uh, criticisms, go ahead, get at me if you have them. Otherwise, talk to you later.